Welcome to iLector Online. Most of the time we encounter the PV diagram in a lot of the thermodynamic processes that we investigate and work with and calculate the, the work done and so forth. It's all done in the PV diagram. But sometimes we will encounter the PT diagram and so we want to at least have a notional understanding of the difference between the two. So let's first go to the more familiar PV diagram. And notice we have these curved lines the reason why we need these curved lines is because those curved lines represent the third state variable. There's three state variables. There's the pressure, volume, and temperature. So notice that this axis only shows the pressure and the volume. So the third variable, temperature, can only be represented by what we call isotherms. Lines that represent the same temperature. So inside a PV diagram, if we stay on this line, the temperature will remain constant. If we stay on this line, the temperature will remain constant. And notice that T1, the one that's closest to the corner here, represents the lowest temperature and the line that's furthest from the point right here, that represents the highest temperature. They're called isotherms. So let's say we move from point A to point B. So point A has a particular pressure, has a particular volume, and a particular temperature. Now we move to point B. So we're, the gas is in a different state now. What has changed? Notice the pressure has not changed. So it's called an isobaric process, but the temperature has increased because now we're on a different isotherm where the temperature is represented as a higher temperature and we also have an increase in volume. Notice that the area underneath this curve represents the work done which is simply the pressure that from A to B which is constant times the change in the volume. Volume increases that means the gas does work. Now notice in order to accomplish that how do we keep the pressure the same and have the temperature increase and have the volume increase. So if we take the pressure the same, we allow the volume to expand and the pressure remains the same and that requires an input of heat and as we put heat into the gas, the temperature will go up as well as the volume will expand. So that makes sense at that point. What if we move from C to D, which means we keep the volume the same so we're in a container that cannot expand and as we add heat to it, the pressure will increase and that means temperature will increase and pressure will increase. So we keep the container fixed and the gas is heated. Now let's go to a PT diagram. Notice we have lines representing the third state variable, which is the volume of the gas. And notice that these lines are straight lines, like y equals mx plus b on an algebra graph. Now notice though that V1 represents the highest, the greatest volume, V2 is smaller and V3 is smaller. So as we go higher up like this at a steeper, steeper line, we represent a smaller, smaller, smaller volume. Now again, let's go from one state to another state, from A to B. So what happens here is that the pressure remains the same. The temperature increases. So how can we get the pressure to remain the same as the temperature increases? Well, we need to allow a greater volume. We need to allow the gas to expand so that the pressure remains the same and the temperature could still increase. So that happens by simply seeing, going from A to B, we go from volume 3 to volume 1. So the volume increases by going from, from V3 to V1 and the temperature will also increase. So that makes sense, right? So we keep the pressure the same, we heat the gas, temperature goes up, but will allow the gas to expand to a greater volume to prevent the pressure from increasing. How about going from C to D? Now here we keep the temperature the same, but we increase the pressure and we go from a larger volume to a smaller volume. So that makes sense when we compress the gas, we will go from a larger volume to a smaller volume. We increase the pressure but the temperature remains the same. So that can only happen if somehow we would then remove some heat because it, you do, we do work on the gas by compressing it to a smaller volume, by increasing the pressure, so then heat must be removed. So typically we'll put the container in some sort of ice bath or something like that that can draw off the heat so that we continue to keep the temperature exactly the same. And so that gives you a, a conceptual feel for the two different kind of diagrams in case you encounter them.